In Greek tradition, Santa Claus, Saint Basil, doesn't come on Christmas. He rather comes on New Year's, although we do exchange presents on Christmas, uh, but that's another story. So I thought I'd be the Greek Santa Claus, and uh, instead of a tutorial, which usually could be boring, I'm going to offer you another plugin. And uh, this plugin is called Fong to Spline, and uh, let's take a look at what it does. To install the plugin, just go to your Cinema 4D root folder and just unzip the archive you can download from the link below into your plugins folder, or alternatively, you can put it in your preferences plugin folder. It's up to you. There's no difference whatsoever. Once the plugin is successfully installed, you'll find it in the extensions called Fong to Spline. And uh, overall, what it does, it creates splines out of a particular subset of edges. So let me show you what I mean. I'm going to create a sphere. And usually spheres are very smooth, as you can see here. And of course, if I render this, you'll see that it's a perfect sphere. That's why we need to go to the spheres attributes and remove the render perfect so that we can see what's happening here. And I'm going to talk about Fong angles and uh, the Fong tag you can see over here, edge breaks and stuff like that. So although this is definitely not smooth, it looks smooth enough when we look at it. And that's because of a very specific algorithm which uh, takes uh, low polygon information and smooths out some of the features when we are rendering or displaying it in real-time 3D. And uh, how these polygons between themselves decide if they are connected, therefore smooth, or disconnected, if I remove this, you will see what I mean by disconnected, not literally, but they actually have a sharp edge, is controlled by an angle threshold, this one here, Fong angle and providing this is on. If it's off, it just makes everything extremely smooth as much as possible. Anyhow, so with this on, I can go and control, and let me show you if I remove the lines here, so it's a bit more obvious. I'm going to go and start fiddling around with this number, and you'll see some sharp edges appearing. So if I go down, there you go, and you can see that at certain numbers, different polygons appear to be sharp. The way that happens is Providing it with this angle, Cinema 4D finds the angle between two polygons, and if it's within the range of the Fong angle, it smooths out. If it's not, it makes them sharp. So this is a very interesting thing. That means that depending on the smoothness of the surface, we can identify certain edges that exist on polygons with a certain angle between each other. And uh, this is where the Fong to Spline generator comes in. If I simply make this a child of this, it creates a spline. And if I make this invisible, you will see the spline over here. And that spline is just a collection of spline segments, one for each of those edges. Uh, we can call them broken edges for now, although that's not technically 100% correct because uh, we do have the ability to override the Fong angle by selecting edges and going uh, somewhere over here. If you go to Mesh and you go to uh, Normals and you break Fong shading and stuff like that. But that is not for this tutorial, but you can manually add some edges to the mix by selecting them, uh, providing your object is a Mesh object and not a generator. Anyhow, the good thing is that by changing this Fong angle now, I can generate the splines. So if I take the sphere and increase the number, and because the polygons are smaller, now that threshold has changed because the angles are smaller. I can go something like three. You can see now we get these lines here. Now controlling these and seeing which ones exactly appear or don't appear is not that easy. So I would say this is more of an art director's tool where you start playing around with the numbers to find uh, the pattern you think is interesting enough. Now there is one more little secret. Let me just uh, change this so we get a few, there you go. So we get these lines now here. These are the only broken edges. If I turn this off, you will see that these are the only 
sharp edges and that's why they become splines. And uh, this is the first way you can use it. Of course, uh, as it's uh, a tradition in our free plugins, uh, we have a selection restriction. So I can make this uh, editable. I can go with my edge selection tool and select some edges here. And from the selected edges, I can make a selection, set selection. And now with that selection here, I can tell the font to spline to only break or only show the splines that are part of this selection, which apparently none are. So let me double click. Ah, uh, yes. So let me just select these. Let's go and set the selection to override it. And now let's go and see. There you go. This is the only set of edges which complies to the selection, which is this one, and complies to the actual font because this is set to default and the font angle is 20. Now there's another interesting feature here. I'm going to delete my sphere and I'm going to add another primitive. The oil tank seems to be the best. Now before I move forward, we all know that we can display the lines, but not everyone knows that we have two types of lines we can display. The actual wireframe that shows the borders of each and every one of the polygons that make up the object. And the other one is the isoparms. And basically, these are not really a product of the object itself. Internally, they are splines that are here for a much cleaner visualization of the shape of an object. So without lines, you get some idea what this is because this currently looks maybe like a cylinder. We can't see the curved top from this angle. You have to come at a shallow angle to see it. So when we are modeling or doing all sorts of things, if I set this to lines and isoparms as it's already set, we can see that curvature. So immediately we can see that this particular shape is not a cylinder and it's something else. Now for the oil tank in particular, there's no way to control how many of these lines we're going to see. So they're automatic. But nonetheless, the font to spline allows us, if I set the mode, first of all, let me delete that selection. If I set the mode to isoparm mode, then suddenly these isoparms become splines. Now, don't forget that we can select the generator, the spline generator, and drag this over here instead of using a hierarchy. And I'm going to get the same thing. I can turn this off. And now I have this cage over here, which because it's a spline, I can actually use it in any context where I can use a spline. So let's make a very small circle and let's get a sweep object, make this a profile and make this the actual shape. So you can very easily create this. And although this is uh, not the next best invention after Lego, it appears that it allows you to make some very interesting shapes. And I'm going to show you some other ways you can use it that don't include primitives. So let me delete the oil tank. I'm going to leave everything as it is. And I'm going to go and create another sweep object. So I'm going to take an end side. I'm going to go to my top view and draw out a spline. I'm going to do this and this and this and this. I'm going to press escape to accept the spline. Excellent. We have the spline and we have the profile. Let's go and create a sweep. Put this here, put this on top. And there you go. We have a sweep. Now, as you can see, we have our isoparms on. These are the isoparm lines. Forget about the geometry itself right now. Let me make this a bit smaller so we don't have to forget about it. Totally. Great. These now can be extracted, but here's the nice little detail. Objects like the sweep or the loft allow you through the isoparm subdivision, which has no bearing on the modeling aspect of it. This is just for visualization purposes to change the number of these. So now we have some more control over these splines. So let me go and make uh, this spline uniform. So I have uh, an equal distribution of uh, segments. Let's go here and I'll play with these segments. You can see I can decide how many of these segments will appear. And that's uh, quite interesting because now if I take the font to spline and drop this sweep in it, and I'm going to go and make this one invisible so we can see 
the wireframe. Now we have this frame, which we can use as a spline, and it's all controlled by the shape and the number of isopalm subdivisions. So although, again, it's a tool with uh, a certain limited use, I'm pretty sure you will find ways to use it adequately. Let's continue and see if we can uh, unearth a trick or two. So uh, the sweep, we can go to the details and change the scale. So that seems to work. So we can create nice little wireframes uh, in this sense. But if I use a loft, so I'm going to delete this, I'm going to create a circle and, as usual, an inside and my new favorite, which is a star. I'm going to move them out of the way, take the inside, move it here. Now we have these three objects. I'm going to stick them under a loft, one, two, and three, and make them children. Again, here are the isoparms. Let me turn off my caps. Excellent. And now I'm going to use the loft in isoparm mode, and let's make this invisible. So there you go. So we have a wire cage. This can be useful because uh, sometimes we want to create wires around the objects, and that's not always possible to do in any other way other than making your object uh, editable and extracting the splines and so forth. And again, the loft has that interesting isopalm subdivision that allows you to make as many isopalms as you wish. And oh, I think I have an idea. So the star itself has eight prongs. So if I set the loft to have eight and eight, 16, what are we doing here? Yep, I'm going to make them times two, 32. Okay, that didn't work because I put it in the wrong parameter. So I'm going to put it 16 here, and there you go. So that was um, sort of a demonstration of how not to make mistakes, but you can see it seems to be off by one. I do have a university tutorial that explains what happens. This needs to be one more than you want because it creates a spline at the beginning and at the end. So it's always what number I want plus one. So 17, and this doesn't really make a difference in this case, just gonna change the shape. It won't change the actual position of these splines. But I guess if you make it the same, you may get something better. Actually, no, you don't. So allow me to experiment here. Everything's going well. Nothing to see here. So, fantastic. So we get these nice little lines and it makes it very interesting. Let's uh, see some examples. I'm going to open a new document. I'm going to get one of my favorite types of objects, which is the sphere. And let's go and check out the lines. I'm going to put it under a subdivision surface object. What happens with that when I set isoparms? Oh, I get these nice round lines. So we don't have the straight lines of the polygon when I set it to wireframe mode, because you can see these are straight lines. If I set it to isoparms and turn on the subdivision, now we're getting those lines which are nice and rounded because these are the isoparms. And uh, you can control these by the subdivision surface. So how round they're gonna be. Zero, one, two, three. The number doesn't change because the number is based on the polygons we have on the sphere. So that's how you go about it. There you go, look at that. Very interesting. And again, I can take the result of this and create a cage. So let's do that. Funk to spline. Let's uh, drag this guy in here. Let's take that funk to spline and put it under a sweep object. Always the wrong menu. Sweep. There you go. And make the circle nice and small. And uh, let's see what's happening here. I have a funk to spline. It's the subdivision surface and it doesn't work because come on nobody nobody anyone isopar mode there you go so don't forget to set it isopar mode otherwise it's set by default to fong mode and it will work in this case well we have very small polygons but look at that now we're getting some interesting shapes and uh, I'm confusing you a bit, so let me show you what's happening here. I'm going to set my lines to wireframe, and you can see that the polygons uh, that have this particular three degrees happen to be distributed in this weird pattern. 
So it's funny how, by experimenting a bit, you may find some situations. Now, it's taking a bit of time because uh, it's calculating a lot of segments. Uh, but look at that. We're getting quite interesting objects. Let's make the circle two segments. There you go. And this is a type of object which uh, I don't know its usefulness, but from an artistic point of view, you can create some very interesting shapes. So let me switch this to an ecosahedron this time. And uh, let me change the fong to something bigger. Again, you can experiment. Oh, look at that. Let me change subdivision to three instead of two. And take this and uh, make it smaller. Let's wait for it. Maybe one degree. Oh, yes, because I had to increase it, not decrease it. And I'm leading by example to show you exactly how you can go about doing this. Look at this interesting pattern now. And again, by experimenting with all sorts of uh, different ways of uh, either creating objects um, and creating uh, your funk angle breaks and uh, using the funk to spline in its uh, default state or using it in isopalm mode, you'll find that you can create some very interesting objects. So here's a tool you never thought you would need and probably you don't need, but then again, it may allow you to make some very interesting art. Last but uh, definitely not least, and actually what I did is I stopped the video because I thought I was done and then thought, wait a minute, we can do more stuff. First of all, you can take this and uh, make a current state object, which will actually give you a spline object, which you can uh, cut and paste in a new document and go around and play with this as a proper spline. You can go to spline and go to your segments and explode segments so that you can get each segment separately which is quite interesting, albeit sometimes it creates these uh, sort of uh, weird um, wrapped around splines and all that, but that's something for you to spend some time on. Uh, let's continue. The other interesting thing you could do is the following. So let me just uh, remove it from there. Now, what I'm going to do here, I have these splines uh, generated. I can turn these off so you can see the spline, is I can feed this into a most spline object. And all you have to do is create a most spline, set the mode in the object tab to spline, and then go to the spline tab and drag whatever the spline is over here. And now I can do all sorts of things. Uh, this visualization irritates me, so you go to the object tab, display mode, and you say align. And uh, now you can do things like uh, make them right on and right off, the complete spline or separate segments so now they're going to sort of write off and generally i love doing all sorts of experiments using the most spline object when it comes to splines because it gives me some freedom uh, to do uh, quite interesting things so for example i'm going to drop this into here and turn it on again and now i can use the most spline to actually write off this object and write it on this is not something that's uh, specific to the Fonta spline, and uh, yet because we can now generate interesting splines that have uh, odd patterns depending on the setup, we can create interesting visuals depending on the shape and the setup for that matter. Anyhow, this is uh, something you may want to think about, uh, but nonetheless, um, it's uh, another way of uh, using these. I just want to highlight another couple of things. And uh, let's make a new document. And what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to get a cube. I'm going to put it under a subdivision service object by pressing my Alt. When I create it, I'm going to set this to isopalms and set this to display those lines. Excellent. Now the cube itself, depending on how many segments I create, will give us uh, the ability to create a nice, interesting pattern. And actually, I'm going to go with three by three by three. Excellent. And now I'm going to create my funk to spline, drag this little bugger in here. And now we have our splines here. If I go to isopar mode, now what I can do is take the generator and move it. There's no problem with that. I can rotate it. No problem with that, but I cannot scale it. And there's a good reason 
for that because it's still referencing the um, relative positions with this and uh, the same behavior when you're using the model mode applies to instances as well you can move them and you can rotate them but you cannot scale them because the scaling is more of a point by point operation but if you do want to scale them uh, you have a couple of ways you can go to the font to spline coordinates tab and scale it any way you want let me undo this or do this manually by using the object tool now if you don't know what the object tool does uh, don't use it now another thing which is very interesting is what happens if I want to have uh, multiple objects under a subdivision surface and blah 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 so if I take a cube and make a copy and move that copy the subdivision surface object cannot subdivide both of them and uh, what we get here is uh, nothing uh, very interesting because there are no isopalms generated for this what I can do is select both of these and uh, put them under a null so alt G under a null and now I have two objects and you can see that it reacts properly to everything before I wrap this up I have another couple of things to tell you so let me take a platonic and uh, I'm gonna use a bevel deformer fantastic I'm gonna put it as a child set the component mode to points set the offset to proportional and set this to 33.333 and that will create a Bucky object and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my font to spline and I'm gonna reference this here and I'm gonna sort of make it invisible now you would expect that uh, this would work if I remove the font tag it will actually do all the polygons and it will work very similarly to the edge to spline but that's not the case you always need the font tag because without it it cannot find the specific edges so just make sure that uh, if for any reason you don't have a font tag to go and add it to make it work and just so that you can see everything works fine look at all this cool stuff you can do like, wow I can look at this all day long uh, last little thing I need to show you and it's a parameter of the font to spline and we have this override type if I turn this on it will give me linear splines with uh, zero subdivisions so I can increase the subdivision number to reach uh, whatever number you need in order to make all the splines proper or I can set it to a schema and now you get these really interesting splines with uh, nice bends and all that and we have a B spline as well I don't know where you're going to use it but nonetheless you can do it and uh, you can change uh, the amount of points that make it up to control the smoothness and uh, on that, I think uh, I've shown you all I have to show you about the plugin. I need someone to tell me how to wear a hat with uh, the earphones. I know I can get some in-ear uh, earphones, but anyway, uh, I thought I'd change my look a bit uh, to look a bit more serious. I don't know if I've achieved that. Anyhow, um, I hope you enjoy this uh, little plugin. Again, it's uh, open source. Uh, the code uh, is commented uh, to a certain degree so you can see how things are done uh, we accept no complaints only um, compliments and uh, it's free after all what are you all complaining about <laughs>